Hello, dear friends. Uh, the church just celebrated uh, the Feast of All Saints, uh, the vigil October 31st and then into November 1st. And what a great victory. 2,000 years of men and women who have been declared saints by the church, people that we can turn to, they intercede for us, they pray for us, and we see in their lives the promise that Jesus has kept to us. You too will rise with me. And so until we wait for that day of resurrection, in the meantime, the beatitude, that means the men and women who are face to face before God. And as they intercede for us, God's divine grace comes upon us. Now, for the rest of November, we have a special commemoration for all those who have died. Uh, and so this year on Saturday, November 2nd, is the commemoration of all souls. Now our parish will have some special recognitions on Monday, this Monday, at 7 p.m. at all three of our churches where we uh, pray for those who have died uh, in a special way from this past year, from last year until this year. And the names will be read off of where the funeral masses were celebrated this past year. And that's where the names will be read off. So it's, it's a mass open for everyone at all three churches, and hopefully you can be there. Now, I'm standing at Holy Redeemer's Cemetery. Now, you know Divine Grace Parish has two cemeteries uh, here at Holy Redeemer and also over at St. Gregory's Cemetery, which I'll be over there in a few minutes to continue our reflection. So one of the traditions is certainly throughout the year, but uh, in November that we find occasion uh, to go to a cemetery, to go to the graves of our loved ones and to pray for them. As a matter of fact, from November 1st to November 8th, the church grants what's called a plenary indulgence. That's where you go to the cemetery. You're praying for God's mercy upon those who have died. Uh, then secondly, you go to confession 15 days within that visit uh, so that you're in the state of grace. Of course, going to Mass to receive Holy Communion. And then to pray for the intentions of our Holy Father. Uh, that typically is in our Father, uh, a Hail Mary and a Glory Be. And what happens then is that the temporal punishment uh, that is with those in purgatory uh, is shortened because of our prayers and because of God's mercy. Now that's from November 1st to November 8th, but really year round you can uh, uh, have what's called a partial indulgence, uh, which is to do the same conditions and praying for the dead. So I would encourage you to go to a cemetery and to uh, in a physical way, pray. Now, if you can't, uh, for those who are homebound or who aren't able to drive, you can still offer those same prayers under those same conditions as well. So hopefully um, we can exercise uh, this spiritual moment in the life of the church. You know, after uh, a funeral mass is celebrated, then there's the procession to the cemetery. Uh, and typically we go into the mausoleum. This is St. Peter Mausoleum at Holy Redeemer, where the priest or the deacon uh, offers some concluding commendation prayers as well. And here at Holy Redeemer, there's the option of even uh, having gravesite burial, uh, but also being uh, interned into the mausoleum itself. So our St. Peter Mausoleum actually is filled. <laughs> so the diocese under the Catholic Cemeteries Association is going to construct at the Holy Redeemer Cemetery another mausoleum. Uh, it's going to be called the St. Anthony of Padua Mausoleum. You know, there's a great uh, tradition in the Elwood City area, particularly the St. Anthony of Padua. St. Anthony, actually my middle name, uh, is taken under his patronage uh, as well. So this will be constructed uh, very soon, and it's going to start summer of 2025. And for those who would be interested in getting more information about being interned in a mausoleum, you can get that information as well. And we have uh, a very large uh, cemetery at Holy Redeemer, where there's also obviously the option of uh, gravesite burial. As you can see here, we have a very large cemetery and all of that area that you see that does not have tombstones is still a part of our cemetery. So uh, for generations to come, for those who are interested in the burial gravesite wise, 
uh, you can get more information about how to proceed. I think one of the more difficult ministries in the church when it deals with funerals is when a child passes away. Uh, so in a very particular way, we pray for all of you who may have lost a child, unborn, newly born, or just as, a, as an infant as well. At Holy Redeemer Cemetery, there is a, a section where we do have, uh, where children have passed away and uh, they've been memorialized in a special way by being in this part of the cemetery as well. So as we uh, honor our Lord and his mercy and grace during the month of November, we pray for all those who have died, but I think in a very special way for young people who have passed away. May God's mercy be with them. As I was making uh, the visit today to Holy Redeemer Cemetery, happened to run into Ray and Joe here, who were preparing and cleaning up their cousin's uh, grave right here. That's one of the things we do during the month of November. As we're making the visit, sometimes it's cleaning it up, getting some flowers, and saying some prayers while we go about this. So this is uh, uh, Priscilla Majors, who had passed away, and we pray that uh, the Lord is granting her eternal life and peace. Blessings to you and your families and to her family as well. God bless. We are now in Zilianople at the cemeteries where when the city was being founded, all of the different Christian religions uh, all had their cemeteries side by side uh, in this part of uh, the town. Uh, St. Gregory's Cemetery, which we'll show you in a moment here, uh, is on the one corner, uh, and that's where uh, burials take place. But I wanted to talk just very briefly, as I referred to a few moments ago at Holy Redeemer Cemetery, that as Catholics, uh, we believe in the burial of the remains. And there's basically two options, right? Uh, a more recent option that we've seen uh, in this country has been uh, the burial of ashes. So at a funeral mass, the urn is used where the ashes uh, are in and we celebrate the mass. Uh, and then uh, we go to the mausoleum where there's the final prayers. And then the church is asking that ashes are in fact buried or interred. So behind me, for example, would be uh, ways in which uh, people are interred in the urn uh, within the mausoleum or the urn would be buried. Now, one of the pastoral situations that we're often finding, certainly me as a priest, is that people don't want to bury uh, the ashes. They might have a difficult time letting go, and therefore the ashes might be at home, uh, on a mantle somewhere, or even um, where ashes are being uh, distributed through jewelry, through rings, through lockets, uh, because people want to stay close. Now, as you know, in our Catholic and Christian tradition, really, is that when somebody dies, there is immediate judgment, okay? Uh, we pray for God's mercy, but condemnation would be one of them, uh, and we call that hell, and that's eternal damnation. Uh, or the person is destined to heaven, either immediately going to heaven, as we celebrate the Feast of All Saints, men and women who uh, immediately have gone before our Lord. Um, and, and purgatory would be the other option where you're definitely going to heaven, but nothing imperfect exists in heaven. So therefore, purgatory is a purging of all that imperfection, and it's a great preparation for heaven as well. So I would uh, encourage family members and friends to uh, pray about for those who have not buried those ashes that we, in fact, do that. Uh, remember, the soul uh, is with the Lord, purgatory or heaven. So the bodies, the remains, uh, have been buried because at the end of time, at the resurrection, body and soul are perfectly reunited. And we see that on Easter Sunday, the Lord appears and he says, I'm not a vision, I'm not a ghost to touch me, feel me. And this is what's gonna happen to us. You too will rise with me, the glorification of the body. In the meantime, we want to uh, recognize the sacredness, the fact that we've been created in the image and likeness of God. And therefore those remains need to be carefully respected. And in the Catholic tradition, that means burial. We are now ending this reflection in this section of St. Gregory Church Cemetery here. Uh, and it's the section that 
has some of the founders of Zillianople uh, and certainly the Catholic founders of St. Gregory, what used to be parish. And there is a tradition that uh, on occasion that the pastor or priest would celebrate Mass uh, in the cemetery. And at some point I'd like to do that. This uh, memorial was dedicated to the men and women who served in World War I and World War II uh, as well. But I'd like to celebrate Mass here for all those who've gone before us. There's a, a small memorial uh, over here which was dedicated to the unborn. And of course we have uh, St. Joseph holding the infant Jesus as protector of the universal church. So as I started this reflection, it'll be good for those who can to visit uh, a cemetery, visit the deceased, pray for them, uh, and also pray for our church that she continue to be able to bury the dead, pray for the dead, and we pray that the saints will always intercede for us. God bless.